Here's a quick video showing you some of the exciting new features coming in real time uh, 2.1. That's Tin Man Real Time 2.1, and that'll be out uh, within the next week or two. And right now we're at the first, uh, well, the end of the second week of uh, of August. So, uh, but let me just show you a couple of these features, and there's quite a few more. I want to highlight uh, just uh, three that are uh, of particular importance. But first, let me just show you how Tin Man Real Time interacts with AI Builder. And whether or not you're using AI Builder to do the uh, autonomous uh, decision making and communicating with intelligent live control, the point is that Real Time will interact directly uh, with any of these external systems, uh, uh, smart systems, or systems with sensors. And, um, and there are a couple of different models and to keep in mind that how it can work. So if we think of uh, the first situation, any microcontroller platform, um, you can have sensor data visualization. So you take that, let's say it's a drone, and you're sending data to Tin Man Real Time. You can use Tin Man Real Time as a live sensor interface. Um, secondly, you could actually add some controls to the screen, like I'm going to show you with buttons and levers and things, to actually send commands live back to that system. And as long the, as the, uh, uh, the controller understands what to do with those commands, which you would have programmed or it would have known, um, it will actually interact with you. So you can manually control that system in addition to visualizing the sensor data in real time. Thirdly, you can use Tin Man AI Builder with it to automate those decisions. So while you can still use manual controls and send back uh, commands to the system, um, you can actually uh, integrate uh, AI Builder with it and actually run on the same desktop and have uh, live sensor data flowing into AI Builder, decisions being made, and sent back and mapped to commands that are sent on to the system through the communication interface. And so uh, that's the quick overview. Now let's get back to uh, real time and I'll show you the, some of the new features. Uh, and based on a number of requests we've been getting from a lot of users, um, uh, you can see in the screen here that uh, I've got a, uh, a rotor, uh, just a four fan motor system. We've got an IMU controller. We don't have it hooked to the uh, uh, the quadcopter, but uh, it is a uh, an IMU sensor that gives us a sen gives us the accelerometer, gyro, magnetometer, but then integrated into a uh, 3D orientation, and we're showing that on the screen. And that came out in 2.06. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to control these fan motors with levers, and uh, I'm also going to receive the data, and I want to record it to a file. And so what I'm going to do is uh, let's just start this. And we can see a couple of things happening. Let me just turn a motor on. And you can see we're using a lever here to control the left fan motor. And there's the, um, uh, the, the front motor. Here's the right. And here's the back. And so now we can vary this for between 0 and 250. It's what we've set. And we see the 3D orientation here. You notice a couple other things. Um, there are the sliders, but let me show you the orientation. We'll show you how that's working. And so if I move this around, you can see the uh, 3D orientation uh, 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 changing. And if I lift this up and associate it with the aircraft, we can actually modify some of the rotor speeds based on um, the orientation in space. But that's just in code, and that's fairly simple to do. Uh, but let's go back over here. A couple other things are happening uh, here, and that are the, the uh, data logger tools. So 3D orientation was 2.06. The levers are um, 2.1. And so these are actual direct manipulation that you can uh, cause and send. You can see the command that's being sent to that system. It's saying rotor back 78.13. Or actually, let's just look at this one here. Uh, and it's, you can see we're uh, going from 0 to 250. And uh, we can do the same thing for the other motor there. That's the head, and we're up to, I think we go up to about 100 on the scale here, but it's mapped to 250. Okay, and you see the 3D orientation gauge, um, but there are three things here, and I'm going to stop this. These files are getting pretty big. Uh, so over here now in our panel, we have what's called a data log tool. And we've always had the ability to write to CSV files, but it hasn't been exposed as a component. And so what we can do is uh, we can just drag and drop a data log onto the screen, and we double click that. And we can choose the name of a file, and we can just say we want this to be uh, test. 
and uh, that's uh, test is good enough test dot dat and um, and then we can include a header row, a timestamp, and sample number. And what we want to do is choose a source. It's COM port 7. Here are the sensors that are coming in off that port. And we've done that through a sensor data template. And if we choose, let's say, for instance, the IMU sensor stick, uh, we see that the available data elements on that sensor are yaw, pitch, and roll. I'm going to add all, all of these. And you can see those are now added. And so the data file structure preview up here, this little animated uh, box, shows us that we chose the sample number, the timestamp. In microseconds, uh, we've got yaw, pitch, and roll. And we can choose any one of these, like say yaw, for instance, and change the precision uh, that's being written to that file. Um, we can do the same thing for pitch. Let's say we wanted a precision of four on that. Once we're done, uh, we can give this a name. This is IMU data log, and we can click OK. And so now, when we run this, uh, we're actually writing to file here. And um, uh, it's actually uh, uh, adding new data to that file. And so that's another uh, new feature to the system. If I were to open one of these files, let's just double click on this and let's view that file. You can see uh, this is just a comma delimited file. And there's all of the data in that file, all 5,506 samples. And so um, that is the data logging. Now you can have all four of these files. They were all four being written to simultaneously. It gives you the number of rows written to each one and the uh, bytes or the position of the file pointer itself. Uh, many of the other things are fairly uh, uh, the consistent with the previous version. Uh, we, can, we can still add commands and buttons to the screen to send commands directly to the system using the levers to control the fan motor, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so these things all still work. The key issue, the key items are here. Uh, the tabs, uh, we talked a little bit about this in the previous video. We can add new tabs to the screen and have other controls on that tab or go back to this one here. So we can have multiple views of the same data interface. And uh, you've got the orientation, and you can add rectangles and shapes, text, images, and custom image buttons as well. And there's the new vertical slider control. Uh, so it's just a quick, uh, quick uh, snapshot. Uh, one of the other things that's coming, it'll probably be in a release just shortly after 2.1, is the ability to create a standalone console. So once you've got all this set and you don't want to deal with this interface anymore, you can create a standalone executable console that is just this here, allowing you to control your uh, uh, PLCs from, say, a tablet or some other location, and you can uh, uh, distribute those. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for, uh, thanks for your time. Uh, if you'd like more information on this, what we can do, uh, just shoot an email to support at tinmansystems.com. We'll get you some information.